Hey, it's Eddie K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video review, we take a look at the LG Velvet, one of LG's newest smartphones that has a really flashy look and a decent set of features. This phone is appropriately named, primarily because when you think of Velvet, you think of something that feels and looks nice, and there's no question that the Illusion Sunset version of the Velvet looks really nice. This is one of the nicest designs I've seen on a phone, especially an LG phone. I do wish, though, that they would have gone with without the glossy back. I mean, this thing's a fingerprint magnet like you've never seen. So unfortunately there's that side of it, but if they went with a matte back on this, it would be killer. But it is really nice. And when I showed it to people, they were surprised that it was an LG phone. They would have expected it was you know, Samsung or somebody else, but no, it is. It's an LG phone and it's a mid-range phone. So it's not one of those super expensive flagships. The 6.8 inch display is going to be obviously the centerpiece beyond the flashy back and it's an P-OLED and it's very nice. It's one of the nicest displays I've seen on, on an LG phone. And uh, beyond the fact that it's responsive and you know all that stuff, it doesn't have a 90 or 120 hertz refresh rate. You're gonna have to stick with 60, which is normal, I suppose, but it would have been nice if LG could have just pushed in that 90 hertz refresh rate just to make it all the smoother than it is but unfortunately you're gonna be stuck with 60. You also have to deal with the notch at the top. If you hate notches, there is a small one here for the front facing camera. It's not as bad as notches used to be, but it's certainly not the hole punch display that we've seen in other phones. I'm gonna to touch on battery life first because of the fact that this phone, like the G8X and the V60 that LG came out with uh, earlier, this also works with a dual screen setup too. So if you have the dual screen case, uh, you basically have a dual screen. And I, I didn't, I didn't get one to review, so I, I can't speak to how it works or how battery life is with it. But uh, without it, I can tell you that battery life will last, the, the phone will last the full day. Multitasking is the biggest battery sapper that I found. So if you have multiple apps open, you're using them, you're like going back and forth between them, that seems to take a little bit more away from the battery than I would have thought. Uh, whereas it holds up quite well when it comes to everything else. So if you're just you know streaming video or stuff like that, it seems to be doing okay. One other thing that is a standout, because this is otherwise a pretty unremarkable phone, but I, LG has always been at the top of its game and at the top of the industry as far as phones go when it comes to audio. So some of the best phones for audio performance are actually LG phones. This one, unfortunately, is missing the quad DAC that makes the other phones so good. But despite that, the sound is excellent. I'm not just talking, I'm not really talking about the speakers necessarily. There is a headphone jack and a USB-C port. So when you plug in to listen, you can actually use a mode called 3D Sound Engine in the settings. When you turn that on, it gives you like a virtual surround sound effect. It, it's, it's actually pretty cool, especially if you're watching a show or a movie or even listening to music, it kind of gives you that live music sort of feel. It's not like, the most exceptional type of feature like that out there. There's other companies doing it, but it is very cool. And I think it's it's definitely an upgrade from listening just normally. So something to think about if you're gonna use the phone, especially for anything related to media. Now going on with that, uh, you know, using the phone generally, look, I'm not a fan. I'm not a big fan of LG software. Uh, I just think the UI needs an overhaul and it just needs a different look, a different feel everything about it, like it's, some of it's okay, but I, I just, I don't know. Given what other competitors are doing, I just think LG can actually up its game here, but they haven't done that in this case. So if you wanted to use a separate launcher like Nova or EV or one of the others, you could do that and kind of change the look uh, of the phone's uh, interface and, and, and go from there. But if you're, you know, if you're okay with LG's interface and that's perfectly fine too, it's exactly what you'd expect it to be here. Now about the camera. So this is one of the caveats that I think applies to this device because it depends really what you're expecting in terms of photos. LG is capable of taking very good photos and the phone can take good photos too, but it's very contingent on the conditions that you're shooting in. So good daylight or, you know, or light in, inside a room, you'll be pretty much okay. But once you're, you know, shooting action or nighttime, low light, that's when things get a little bit tougher. And the manual mode, which I've, has always been my favorite mode on any LG phone, unfortunately, is kind of limited in that you can't control ISO. So you can control the shutter speed, you can't control the ISO, and that just makes a huge difference in what kind of photos you can get with it. Now, if you do use the night mode, it's all right. You'll get something decent, but again, being a mid-range device, 
uh, it, it's not going to be up to par to something like the, the Google Pixel 4a, for example, which shoots better in that regard. The same is true of video. So video is okay. Again, you can shoot decent video clips and you do have the ability to kind of zoom in and pack, capture the audio from a subject when you're zooming in them while shooting video. It, it works, it's pretty good, but the footage itself, again, will vary and you'll, your best results will typically be when the lighting is in your favor. So in summary, I mean, what's interesting about the Velvet is that it's actually a phone that belies its price. This is a mid-range phone. It's playing in the same ballpark as, you know, phones like the Pixel 4a, the iPhone SE, uh, the Samsung Galaxy A71, like it, it's in that sort of ballpark and it holds up quite well against those phones despite some of its limitations. But when you look at it, it actually looks like it's something prettier, more expensive even than those. Not, you know, again, not that the materialism matters, but it just, it just shows that good design doesn't necessarily have to come with a super high price. And that's what, what I think was really, really nice about this phone. Unfortunately, you know, you don't get every single feature, but you will get some that matter. Like, I mean, wireless charging's in here. You get some water resistance too, which is always good. So there, there, there is at least some durability, some functionality here that applies, even when you're not, again, you're not paying top dollar for it. I could have done without the curved edges on the display. I, I really wish manufacturers would stop doing this. I, I know that they think that it look, makes the phone look nicer, but the only problem I have, well, the main problem I had with that is that it, it sometimes leads to inadvertent touches. Um, it's a common problem with all curved displays. It's not specific to this phone, but it's something that unfortunately does happen a little too often. And uh, I just, I, I think LG would have been better served going with, you know, flatter, a flatter display, but they didn't. And uh, not that that, you know, really detracts from the phone because ultimately this is a worthy purchase. Like it's, it's worth a look. If, you're, if, if your budget is in this range, it is a phone that at least is worth looking at because it holds up quite well against its competition. And that's my review of the LG Velvet for the Best Buy blog. I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.